Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to do a quick scan of the markets. It's the weekend and it's what I do normally as part of my routine. I've not recorded one of these for a while. I thought it'd be good just to get back in the routine of sharing my thoughts on what the markets and potentially some key levels this week to look out for. So as always, we want to take a look at the news first for the week. Just see what potential things could come along and get in the way. So anything that's triggered red on Forex Factory is always a something of concern to have a look at. And obviously on Monday morning, we've got something around the Euro, so the German flash manufacturing PMIs. I don't think it's going to have too much of an effect on Euro because obviously the expected of the forecast are always quite aligned. But again, scanning through the rest of the week, we can see there's pretty much nothing that's going to come along that could have an impact on anything. There's very sort of little amount of news coming out. The only thing potentially could be is towards the end of the week, we've got some... Uh, Fed Chair Powell speaks uh, on Friday afternoon, so that could have an impact through things sort of just happening that could be closing the week on Friday. And as always, just want to take a look at the dollar index, see how things are moving there across all of the currency pairs, just really get a feel for strength of the dollar. And we can see that it has been rising over the past week, uh, a lot more strength coming back into the dollar, but we're now coming up to a zone that's been rejected a few times. So you could look at this as being either potentially a reversal pattern, almost a double bottom, and therefore strength in the dollar could rise, come back up to the 100 level, or this could be seen as a rejection point and price could come back down to 91 to 90. I don't know at the moment, it's one that I want to keep an eye on, but really there's obviously a lot more strength coming to the dollar this week. So let's start by looking at Euro dollar. This has had an absolute smashing over the past couple of weeks. It's been rejected at the highs of 1.2, is now literally pushing 1.17 really has seen a huge sell-off in the past couple of weeks. So the key thing this week with the price, it did come down and touch a previous low at 1.17, and it didn't really respect that at all. It did have a touch on it at the beginning of the week, and towards the end of it, it literally did break down and close the week below that level of previous support. Now, if we're expecting another negative week, definitely we can see price come down to the next level of somewhere in the region of 1.16. So we could see potentially a sell-off of another 100 points on Euro this week. So if we come down to the hourly chart, again, we can clearly see this in a nice sort of downtrend. Although there's been a few reactions to some news articles, price has not pushed up at all to start forming any new higher highs this week. And we are still looking at selling this throughout the next week. So now taking a look at cable, British pound, we can see this is really range bound. It's literally doing absolutely nothing. It is bouncing between 1.36 and almost 1.4, maybe 1.42. But I guess a 600 pip range is quite high. Obviously, if I wanted to trade a range bound movement, I wouldn't be looking at anything this high. I want it much more consolidated, but I really can't see any clear direction or any change of this happening over the next week or so. So again, looking at the hourly chart, this could literally just represent the same we're seeing in the dollar strength, so therefore price pushing down. There's nothing here looking like a reversal. There's nothing looking like there's going to be a change of direction. So again, I'd be literally looking for price to pull somewhere up to the 1.37 level and start selling from there. As we can see here, where price has broken down through previously this level of 1.372, price just literally continued going all the way down, right down to 1.36. So we're seeing 120 pip movement downwards. Therefore, if we're looking for a a bounce price come back up, we could see it come back up to somewhere in the close to the region of 1.37 before the sellers come back in again this week. So let's look at Aussie dollar. This is literally in free fall at the moment. I'm not sure if this is through their COVID restrictions over the past couple of weeks. They've seen a huge sell-off with everything closing down in the country and not looking like getting any better in the next two, three weeks, as well as closing down much of the economy, as well as tourism, travel, all the way into next year. But we've seen a bit of a consolidation over the past month. And as soon as price got to this 0.73 level, it literally broke down through and crashed all the way down to 0.71. Now, the next level below that is going to come down at 0.7. I definitely see this being a target for a lot of the short sellers in the next couple of weeks. So that's a lot clearer on the one hour chart we can see previously. It's just being sort of range bound, but still slightly towards a negative, pushing down lower. And as soon as it broke down through those levels, it never even came back to retest. It literally just went down and down. So I can see that there's going to be potentially a consolidation for the next few days, potentially coming up to 0.723, so probably a 30, 40 pip movement up before it consolidates sideways for a bit and price then tanks all the way back down to 0.7. So the other major pairs, USD, JPY. Again, the price on this on the daily chart is really going nowhere. It's absolutely sideways. 
There's just nothing happening at all in this to trade. We can see that the 20 and the 50 moving average are literally are the same now, just showing you that the price has just literally for the past almost month or two just been consolidating in a very tight range. We could argue we're seeing an ascending triangle pattern, prices being constrained by an uptrend and a downtrend is being squeezed, and therefore the likely next move is a continuation of the previous uptrend. I can't see that myself because if we look at the weekly chart just for some higher time frames and some more levels of resistance. So on the weekly chart, we've seen some higher highs, higher lows. So therefore we're looking in this downward channel. We have just broken up above that. Again, it depends on how we draw our lines. But again, it's consolidated around that level and more likely for me, price is going to react and drop back down. But again, that also comes into how the actual dollar strength is going to continue. And if the dollar weakens, definitely this is going to start dropping. So moving away from Forex now and onto gold. Now gold's been really interesting this week. It has really reacted some big numbers and the range has been huge. Now for me, that was a reason not to trade this week. Just want to see some more consolidation and price just settle down a little bit. But I think the key thing is we've had three rejections of the price of 1830, 1832. So that's now starting to show a much stronger level of resistance. Then obviously the rejection of that price broke all the way down through 1800. It broke down through 1750 and it came all the way back down to 1685 pretty much. So, so when price dropped down this week, we did see that sort of support coming back in at 1765. Those were the two previous lows and therefore we had a reversal pattern. That's why we saw a nice uptrend after that way. But moving down to the four hour chart, we can really start to see the structure building and price action. And this is where it gets a really bit confusing on what's going to happen over the next week. So you can see after the massive spike at the beginning of the week, price hasn't really broken down below 1720. It has been quite consistently above that. Now, as price did recover, we did see a nice sort of new uptrend forming on the four hour chart. So some higher highs and some higher lows, but it really got stuck. It did not break up through anywhere near the 1800 level, which was really seen as that key level of resistance. And we're now seeing it rejected multiple times and not even coming close to pushing up above 1790, 1795. And on the one hour chart, it's even clearer. We can now start with seeing a consolidation sideways pattern. And therefore, but price is starting to make a lower highs and it is pushing down on the lower side as well. So we could now see a lot more sellers coming in this week and price come back down to that 1720 level. So for me, I'm going to watch it this week, really start to see if it builds that level of support around this 1775, 1718 level. And if price then starts to rebuild and break out to some newer highs, we could see that retesting of potentially 1800, 1815. I don't think it's going to come up close to 1830, but who knows what news article could come out this week and have a really positive impact on gold. Now, I've not looked at oil in a while. I really am surprised that price has fallen as much as it has. Now, this could be down to some political unrest, especially in the Middle East. We've seen a lot more aggression coming out of Iran. We've seen some oil tankers being hijacked. It just could be a bit of unsettling there and people starting to just consolidate on their pricing. Or it could be that we're going through the summer months and therefore there wasn't much oil needed for heating homes. Now, depending what oil you're tracking, because there are so many different varieties of oil, whether it's US light crude, whether it's uh, Texas, whether it's North Sea oil. Now, we are looking at some key levels at, on this particular chart, around about the 66 to $67 per barrel. Now, price has broken down to that level quite easily and is now starting to get some support off the 200-day moving average. But what is clear, if there's more weakness in the price of the dollar, there is nothing stopping it from crashing all the way back down. Now, I don't think dollar's going to get anywhere close to $40 a barrel. I think this is literally just looking at speculative things. For me, I think price is now going to start consolidating this area and start to see more value coming back into oil as we get into the second half of 2021. We started thinking of where the demands for oil, whether it's through transportation, people driving their cars, air transport, manufacturing, heating, all those things potentially looking stronger in the second half of this year. So therefore, for me, price of oil is going to start to get some more value and start coming up from this level. But again, that's based more around fundamentals, more on technical analysis, but fundamentals do play a big part in oil, especially people looking to buy oil futures to lock in that price and get good deals. So taking a quick look at the UK 100 or the FTSE, we have seen in quite a nice strong uptrend over the past couple of months. And that's why throughout this most, most of this year, in fact, price has been increasing and moving upwards. Yes, there's been a few spikes and sort of rocky parts of the road, but every time price does fall off considerably, it does tend to bounce and come all the way back up and come stronger. So if we draw in the three recent highs, we can see they are making higher highs. 
So therefore we are looking at a stronger uptrend. So look at the one hour chart for example, we could say that this has actually now formed a double bottom. We have broken up through the previous high and now price is starting to push up higher. So therefore for me, price looking on the FTSE is getting stronger this week and could potentially come back all the way up to 7,250 by the end of this week. Again, as always, most global markets and indices are driven by the US. Looking at the US 30 as an example, that again is pushing up into some higher highs. And we can see every time that there is a big sell-off in the US 30, so the Dow Jones, it reacts pretty swiftly and price does push up really, really quickly. So again, even with the negative news of the past week, with lots of things going on in Afghanistan, we've seen price come down. We've got a bit of a reversal bar and this low test candle. And again, next one coming in green, we can see the buyers are coming back into the Dow Jones. There could be in other markets as well. Therefore, price likely to push higher in the Dow Jones this week. We could see all time highs again. Right, Bitcoin cryptocurrency. This has been massively exciting this week. Not something I've traded. I've actually got investments in it, but I'm not actually trading it on my platform. So, so massive things happening in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency this week. Price have just been rallying, rallying, and we could start to see some more momentum come to this and price push all the way back up above the 50,000 level. We go back historically, we've seen a lot of support coming at 30,000 level. It consolidated sideways for a long period of time. It broke up through that downward channel, and as soon as it broke up through 36, 37, and retouched on the 40, it pulled back, broke up through 40, and now we are pushing 48, $49,000 per coin. So on the weekly chart, we're seeing four consecutive buying weeks, which is quite unusual for Bitcoin. And when it does get into that momentum, it just carries on going. It's clear that obviously as price gets up to the 50,000, that's where we were getting a lot of support coming in, around about the sort of 47 to 48,000. So as it breaks up through there, we can now see a big push potentially back up to the highs of 65,000 again. So yeah, definitely going to be a big week for cryptocurrency, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what it does. So yeah, there you go, my quick roundup of the things I'm looking at this week, where trends might be forming, where we might get some key rejection levels. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see more of this, as well as any particular other currency pairs you want me to add, where you want to do a quick summary of view of just the trend or direction, or a more in-depth analysis of where things might be going in the long term, and what markets are like to move those. See you again soon. Cheers.